You know what's the worst part about today? You know what's the worst part about it? It's not the fact that the Bears lost. Ah, they do plenty of that. It's not the fact that they lost to the Packers. Because in my lifetime, they most certainly do plenty of that. They're very adept, very skilled at doing so. It's not the fact that the Bears ultimately got swept by the Green Bay Packers in 2019. Because again, this organization is very adept at doing just that. It's not the fact that where I wanted to come on here after today's game and bash on the cheeseheads and talk about how overrated they are, that they're a fraud, even though a lot of us know deep down that's true, I don't get to do that. Haven't earned the right to do that. The worst part about today is not the ultimate realization that whatever fleeting hope there was is gone and the Bears aren't going to make the playoffs. Because again, let's be realistic. Including this year, in the past 30 seasons, the Bears have made the playoffs eight times. Eight. Not even 30% of the time. So again, I am more than definitely used to that. The worst part about today was not seeing the offense stink up the joint for basically the first half. Again, I'm used to that. Seeing the former number two overall pick quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky, make a couple of good plays and plenty of more crappy throws. Throws at receivers' feet that would make Cade McNown proud. That wasn't the worst part. Because ultimately, knowing that the Bears drafted him, you just had to know deep down inside that he ultimately was going to prove that he's not the guy. And the realization that he's not the guy should have come to all of you a long time ago. And if you're holding on to this hope, stop! Being naive and dumb is no way to get through life, especially as a Bears fan. Or hell, maybe it is. Who the frick knows at this point? Is the worst part of today's loss the fact that this so-called alleged elite defense that knows that they need to be big in this all-important game gives up 21 points early where the team falls way damn behind? No. That's not even the worst part of it. The worst part of it is it's just all emblematic of the mediocrity of the midway. I mean, what more can you say? You're going to have those idiots that look at the numbers and say, Oh, Trubisky threw for over 300 yards. <laughs> that didn't mean crap in this game. Because a lot of that came when the team was already out 21-3! Because he played right tits in the first half! The running game that can't get on track because Nagy refuses to try and get it on track. Hey, here's a guy playing with the 5-6 running back, Tariq Cohen. Another game with less than 15 carries for David Montgomery. Another game with less than 50 yards rushing for David Montgomery. Another game where the offensive line struggled, struggled, struggled to open up any type of consistent running lanes. Another game where it felt like far too many times the shell-shocked young quarterback was under duress and pressure because his offensive line not only can't run block, they can't pass block either. And don't let any of these analytics nerds or anybody else tell you anything differently. It's not the fact that these corners for the Bears are sitting there playing 10 yards off the receivers because how well that worked out this year, it happened. So stop doing it and instead they persist! It's a fact that this damn team has players like Amuka Murphy like, no, I'm good. I'm making business decisions. I'm not going to try and tackle Aaron Jones. It's not like this is a game with the freaking season on the line. It's not like you expect the guy that you gave up two first round picks for to actually bother to show the hell up in this game. And I don't want to hear the scheming excuses, the double teaming excuses. The bottom line is, he's supposed to be the alpha dog. He ain't the alpha dog. Where the hell is he that most of this year? It's just 
just another year and another wasted one at that. And what makes this even worse is for once, for once, I actually bought into the BS. I actually believed in this team, in this mediocre midway organization. And that's what the hell I deserve. I softened my tone. I tried to roll with the punches. I avoided saying sometimes what was really truly all in my mind because God knows when it comes to the numbskulls that are in the Bears media, the Bears fan base, you don't need a voice like mine whether you like it or not. It's the mistake of having expectations. Like you look at this game. The first quarter, one offensive first down. You know, even on the first drive on defense. You're lucky Valdez Gantling dropped the frickin' bomb from Rodgers. That should have been a touchdown. Consistently this year, this defense under Chuck Pesuckass has come out and underwhelmed to start a game, getting it pounded on their throat and getting it thrown right over them. Oh, the Bears won't. This Vic Fangio. I knew better. I knew better. But I wanted to believe. And even when you think about believe and belief, the core part of that is lie. And all I did was lie to myself this year. And all of you that sit there and want to hold your hat on this game and say, well, it's risky playing better in the fourth quarter. Well, what about the first three quarters, you red holes? Well, he's been better the last few games. This team is 7-7. Seven and seven. His offense had three points at the end of three quarters. Shut the hell up! Shut up! Stop with your accepting of the mediocrity. Stop with your pathetic pandering to this organization that doesn't freaking deserve it! Eight playoff trips in the last 30 seasons! Zero Super Bowl titles! I know you had Bears fans out there on Twitter today talking about this is Bears weather. We're going to play Bear football. I don't want Bear weather. I don't want Bear football. I want winning goddamn football. How about some Patriots football? Hey, win if you can, lose if you must, always cheat. It don't matter. I'll take the accusations and the freaking Lombardi trophies that organization's got. Hell! You've seen the gold standard in that division mostly for the past two and a half decades. It's the freaking Packers. I'd much rather play Packers football than Bears football. Because at least if they play Packers football, they have an actual franchise Hall of Fame quarterback, and they'd actually be consistently relevant and contenders. And the Bears have none of that going for them. This backwards-ass organization, yet again, and again, I knew better. I knew better. They're going to build up the defense. Because that's where the league is going, right? It is so gut-wrenching to watch a game like this. They go down 21-3. to The Packers are running through them. They're running over them. Rodgers is comfortable. He's doing just enough. And then all of a sudden, here come the Bears kind of rolling back. And they do just enough to reel you in. And here's Money Mitch. Pick to the lolly. <laughs> Way to clutch up there, Trushevsky. Even when they get in position, you get that phenomenal play by a Dean Lowry. And it just reminds you that no matter what, it just doesn't matter. Because it doesn't matter. Don't come at me and talk about how impressive it was that they didn't give up and that they kept fighting. Who gives a crap? If they played with half-ass effort and lost 21 to 13, then at least I'd have something to point to and say, hey, this team needs to better live up to its potential. Instead, you're pointing out that this team is playing hard and they're playing to their maximum potential and they still lost 21 to 13. Well, where the hell do you go from there, you idiots? You don't. Effort. That's loser talk. It's like you 
see all these old Bears films that are talking about, well, you knew no matter what, if you won or lost, that when you were in the Bears game, you played the Bears, it was always going to be a battle. Because a lot of times, especially once you got to the 60s and beyond, the Bears pretty consistently lost. So who gives a crap if they took a physical toll on you? Because you still beat them. Stupid. This is the refs aren't helping. Cordero Patterson makes a phenomenal play on puck coverage, and they call a freaking penalty on him for that. It just, and they don't even want to bring it up, really. I don't even know why I just did. Because in the grand scheme of things, did it really make any difference? Absolutely not. Because this alleged fraud of an elite Bears defense has been anything but elite this year, no matter what these idiots try to tell you. Oh, they've had injuries. Elite units figure out a way to get it done, and they figure out a way to step up and nut up and mad up when their team needs them the most. Monsters of the Midway, my white pasty ass. And it's offense. You see the idiots on Twitter. Oh my god, two biscuits will do some good today. You know you go go with them again next year and they'll be figures it out. How many more years do you need? Mahomes last year's first four years as starter. Threw for over 5,000 yards, 50 touchdowns, team made the NFC Championship game, went to overtime, should have beaten the Patriots, and he was the least ever paid. This year, Lamar Jackson, his first full season as a starter, second year in the league. He's been dynamic, phenomenal. The Ravens are the top team in the AFC, and he's going to win the MVP. Deshaun Watson's in year three. Here's the dude in Houston. They win in spite of Bill O'Brien, the head coach, and in spite of Bill O'Brien, the general manager. But you want to talk to me about patience with Trubisky. I take it back. The worst thing of all is seeing a lot of you come up with pathetic excuses to defend the mediocrity of the McCaskey family, the mediocrity of this Bears organization. This is not how it should be. This is not how it's supposed to be. When you have to do so much to try and justify things, that tells you all you need to know. If you have to go this far to excuse Nagy, he ain't that dude. If you have to go this far, Ryan Pace, what the hell are you going to give him a six year for? He's already had five, and they got one playoff appearance out of it. Give me a break. Jerry Angelo was better. Oh, Trubisky in year four. How many more years do you need to see the dude to know that he sucks? It took you six with Grossman, eight with Cutler, and even in the case of Cutler, some of you are still delusional enough to think he was pretty good. Being embedded with this Bears fan stupidity, this Bear fan's acceptance of mediocrity is the worst thing about being a Bears fan. And it is the worst thing about this season because instead of holding this organization's tits to the ring like they deserve to, everybody's going to be pathetically pandering and saying, well, it's not that bad. They're on the right track. And come next year, they'll be back. The hell you say?